Hello everybody and welcome to another video. Now today we're going to be looking at um, a band and I'm going to pronounce a lot of things wrong in this I can guarantee you. Uh, we're looking at a band called Sociedad Alcoholica. No idea so I had to look up. Um, apparently commonly abbreviated to SA they are a crossover thrash band from Basque country in Spain. Now as I understand it, a crossover thrash band is sort of like a mix between thrash and punk, from what I understand. Uh, they were founded in Vitoria Gastiz in 1988, so they've been around for quite a while. Uh, their lyrics tend to have a crude, direct and somewhat emotional approach to politics and among other things deal with issues such as militarism, fascism, racism, sexism, state violence and monarchy. So pretty typical punk fare going on there. Now over the years, SA has become a controversial and yet successful band with considerable impact in the underground Spanish and Latin American punk and metal scenes. From 2002 to 2006, the band was repeatedly accused by Asociación de Victimas del Terrorismo, or ATV, the, and other right-wing uh, groups and publications of, of glorifying terrorist acts by a group called ETA. And that's all I know about the name of that place. I don't know what it means. They were ultimately acquitted of all of these charges, but as a consequence of this controversy, uh, the band has been banned by some conservative local governments from playing in several places in Spain, including Madrid. So, uh, quite a bit of a backstory going on with this ear band. Um, now, the track we're going to be looking at is called Cuando Nada Vale Nada, Nada even. Uh, which, as I understand it, translates to when society, when nothing is worth nothing. Sorry, I don't know where I st what I started saying there, but when nothing is worth nothing. Apparently, that's what it stands for. Now, I have got a translation here, but I don't know how good it's going to be because the song is sung in uh, Spanish. Uh, so I don't know how accurate this translation is going to be, as I've said with most translations that I've read in uh, previous videos. Um, but hopefully we'll get the general idea as to what the song is talking about. Um, so I think we'll jump to it. I've been waffling for three minutes now. Uh, so yes, Cuando um, Nada Vale Nada by Sociedad Alcoholica. Let's have a look. You can definitely hear the sort of uh, punk element of the um, band coming through, and you know you can also tell definitely the thrash element as well. Now, 
look, this translation turns out is probably not the best, um, but I will do what I can with it. From what I can understand, though, this seems to be talking about homelessness, which goes along with the title when nothing is worth nothing. Um, now, the translation that I have, I, I will go through it and do my best to try and make any corrections. It says, small places grow when there is no one in them, and you wander between the walls, crashing into you, looking everywhere. You seem to listen to the madness calling, do not let him in. They look at you like an abnormal, they look at you like an abnormal, look dirty and elusive looks. Many are also laughing, ignoring your misery. But those smiles do more harm to you than a thousand needles stuck in your fingers, taking off one by one each nail from the skin, starting each nail. Thrown away, no, thrown, thrown away, thrown like a rag in any... Now here it says lao, so I don't know if that's just a word that's not translated, but it's, you know, thrown away like a rag. Spending nights between cartons, enjoying dreams, my reward to survive. So, you know, he seems to be talking about homelessness because there's like um, crash, you're crashing into everything. You, um, you seem to listen to the madness calling, do not let it in. So, obviously, being homeless, you know, things, you know, things start crawling into your brain, sort of like telling you, you know, this is what's happening, this is why it's happening, you're useless, you're worthless, you're rubbish, you know. And, you know, having been through it myself, I, I can strongly identify with that. They look at you like you're an abnormal. Dirty and elusive looks. Many are also laughing, ignoring your misery. Again, you know, people look at homeless people and they think, you know, this person has done this to themselves. You know, they, they, they don't take into consideration how that person ended up there. And they look at them like the scum of the earth. And uh, that's something that annoys me. Because, like, uh, when I was made homeless, I, wasn't my, I was made homeless out of no fault of my own. You know, I was, I was brutally attacked by my ex. I was arrested and thrown in jail for 24 hours for something I hadn't done. Uh, as a result, I couldn't... I wasn't allowed to go anywhere near her. So at that point, I wasn't allowed to go back to where I lived. I wasn't allowed to go back to my home. So I was actually homeless for a year. And none of that was my own fault. But people of society today, they look at homeless people and automatically assume that that person is homeless because they've done something wrong. You know, it's that person's fault. And it's, it's disgusting. I hate it when people make that assumption. You don't know that person's story. You don't know what's led them to that situation. You know, don't judge people until you know what it is. Anyway, the song carries on. Those smiles do more harm to you than a thousand needles stuck in your fingers, taking off each one by one the nail from the skin. You know, so it's like seeing those sort of derisive looks on people's faces, the sort of condescension, the way people treat you. You know, you're out, you're out there struggling to survive and people looking at you like you're some disgusting sewer rat or, you know, that you're, you're some sort of sub-human species, you know. It, it, it's worse than torture, uh, uh, they're trying to highlight that, you know, it's worse than having your fingernails pulled off. Um, and then it says, thrown away, thrown away like a rag, spending nights between cartons. I'm assuming that means, you know, like sleeping in a cardboard box. Um... Enjoying dreams, reward is to survive, you know. You, you're, you're living out on the street, you don't know whether you're going to wake up the next morning. You know, you're sleeping in freezing temperatures, driving rain, you know, all this sort of thing. You, you, the, the reward for surviving, you know, you wake up the next day and you're like, oh, I've made it another day. So this, I, I like the, what this song is saying and it actually hits quite home, hits home quite hard with me because... It's something I've experienced firsthand. Um, so, yeah, let's carry on.
There we go. Kondo Nada Vale Nada by Suzidad Alcoholica. Now, I really like the meaning to this song. I really do. You know, it's like I said before, it's, it's something that strikes home very personally to me, having um, actually experienced it myself. And I mean, the music itself, it was actually pretty good. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of punk music in general. You know, I do have some, uh, but it's not a it's not a genre of music I tend to listen to a lot. But with it being sort of punk thrash, you know, it was it was quite catchy. It, you could definitely um, tell the punk element in it. Now, the song actually carried on. On your knees you are, surrounded by dirty clothes. The hand that you have extended never, never stops shaking. It does not stop shaking from cold, from fatigue, and something else. The shadows become vermin, and it costs so much. It costs so much. It costs so much. It costs to distinguish reality when life is worth nothing, and when nothing is worth nothing anymore. Forgive me because I have been one more. I have been another one. Another one more than his sight turned away. Then this last bit doesn't really translate well, I don't think. Another, another more when passing by your side. Another more I wanted to hide as if it was nothing with me. Nothing with me. Nothing with me. Nothing with me. So, you know. They're basically talking about homelessness and how pe how people are so ignorant about the fact of of it you know how people came to be homeless what sort of conditions these people have to try and survive in and you know what they have to go through on a daily basis and you know like it's it's something i always you know i i never had anything against homeless people before it happened to me but when it happened to me i actually learned so much more than I knew before about what it's like, and it re it really changed my perspective. I mean, I'm not I'm not going to say you know I'm glad it happened to me because I'm not. It was a horrible, horrible moment in my life, and I wouldn't wish it on anybody. But it really sort of opened my eyes even more so to the way the you know that homeless people end up living because it, it was a horrible situation. And I was only homeless for a year. Some of these people are on the streets for several years. Now, it says here, on your knees you are, surrounded by dirty clothes. The, hands that you, the hand that you have extended never stops shaking. You know, obviously, living out in those conditions, you know, hand out sort of asking for maybe a little bit of spare change, what have you. You know, never stop shaking because of the cold or maybe even a, an, an illness that you can't get diagnosed because of your situation. And it even says there, it does not stop shaking from cold, from fatigue and something else. Now, th there's a line there that says, and something else. Now, I'm not going to paint it as all homeless people are innocent victims. Some people have done it to themselves. Now, a lot of people, and it's in my experience, uh, when I was in that situation, most of the people I met were homeless through no fault of their own. Now, there were people who did it themselves, you know, people who fell into the use of uh, narcotics and stuff like that. You know, and that sort of thing. Those people have done it to themselves. But the thing is, the proportion of homeless people that are that way because of alcohol and drugs is actually minuscule. It is tiny compared to what people actually believe. And that, that's one of those things that, it's one of those stereotypes, one of those cliches that really annoys me. It's like, don't give that homeless person money because he'll only go spend it on drugs. Don't give that homeless person money because he'll only spend it on alcohol. That is the furthest thing from the truth. Right? A homeless person, if they are asking for money, the only things that are on their mind is somewhere warm to sleep and something to eat. I'm not going to lie. Some will use it for alcohol and drugs, but very, very few. Most people will be sitting out there trying to get this you know a, a small amount of money just so that they can eat something just so that they can find you know they could possibly find somewhere warm to sleep that is the first and foremost thing on their mind 
and you know, I can tell you this from personal experience and people that I met during my time like that. And it really pisses me off. It, it, I get so enraged when I hear people talk about homeless people that way because it's not like that at all. It's it's the assumption that's made because of you know TV shows and movies. You know, they're always portrayed that way, but that is not the case. You know. These people are struggling to survive. For all you know, you know, this person has been an honest hard worker their entire life that fell upon hard times and they've ended up losing everything. Or, you know, somebody like me who, you know, I came home from work one day, got violently assaulted, had my jaw broken, etc. I got arrested for something that wasn't my fault. And as a result, I lost my home. I lost my job. And I was made homeless for over a year, you know. No fault of my own. So many people that I met during my time had, you know, had been made homeless through no fault of their own. And this common misconception that homeless people are only there because they've messed up, you know, it inf infuriates me. And the fact that they seem to assume that every homeless person is an alcoholic or a drug addict. No. It, it infuriates me. And this is more or less what this song is talking about as well. You know, it, it, it's saying that it costs so much, it costs so much to distinguish reality, because when you're in that situation, you do start, you know, you do feel like you're losing your mind. It's like, what have I done so wrong in my life that I deserve to be in this situation? You know, is this really happening? Can I just wake up tomorrow, you know, find myself in a nice warm bed and find out that this whole thing is just a dream? You just wish, you know, and hope that the situation you're actually living in isn't real, you know, and you're wondering what the hell did you do to deserve it? And it says there, when life is worth nothing, when nothing is worth nothing anymore, you know, that's, that's a really powerful sort of line there, because being in that situation again, you know, it, it made me realise how little things are worth so much more, you know, the, the smallest things you take for granted are actually the most important things that you really need to keep hold of. You know, um, when I was when I was made homeless, I had to sell literally everything I owned. You know, I I used to have a humongous music collection. My CD collection was huge, and I had to sell all of my CDs just so that I could eat. And you know. Some of these were like special editions, some of them were rare, some of them were imports, and I was going into a shop and selling them to the shop for like 5, 10, 20 pence per disc. You know, I was getting absolute beans for it, you know, I was getting absolutely nothing for them, you know, so I was, I'd spent like thousands of pounds probably on my music collection and I was getting back a pittance. But I had to do it because I had to eat, I had to survive, and you know, I had to sell my guitars, I had to sell so many things. You know, and then you, you sort of come to the realisation that all of that stuff actually doesn't mean anything, that stuff is not important, it can be replaced. You know, you realise what the important things are. And it's, you know, no nothing no physical possession that you own is worth more than someone's life. And th this is, you know, they're, they're talking about, you know, people just walk by these homeless people, ignore them, sneer at them, treat them like garbage. You, you know, these people are humans. How would you like it if that was a member of your own family who was in that situation? You'd do everything in your power to help them, so why can't you be a decent human being and help somebody else you know we're all on the same planet we're all entitled to the same quality of life you know one of the least helpful things you can do and th this is another thing i discovered and something that really annoyed me as well the least one of the least helpful things you can do is shout something so stupid at them like why don't you get a job All right it is very, 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 very difficult to get a job when you're homeless. You know, I was home, like I said, I was homeless for about a year, maybe just over. 
And that entire time, I was trying to get a job so I could get myself into a place where I could, even if I was like renting a bed and breakfast or something like that, so I'd have somewhere to sleep. Most of these places, most places of employment around the world, will not employ someone without a fixed address. And when you're homeless, you can't exactly put your address as River Bank just over there. You know, they need somewhere to send correspondence to. They need somewhere to send, like, paychecks or stuff to. And because you don't have a fixed home address, they will not employ you. Because you can't guarantee that you'll have a decent night's sleep. Because you can't guarantee that you'll manage to get a uniform washed. Because you have no access to those sorts of facilities. They will not employ you. So telling a homeless person to just get a job is possibly the stupidest and least helpful thing you could ever say to someone. And, you know, it, it was infuriating to me because I was trying my damned hardest to get a job. And the amount of times someone told me, why don't you get a job? I'm like, every single day. I mean, that's what I spent most of my days doing. You know, I was, I was wandering streets almost on a daily basis trying to find a job. Every single day, applying for anything and everything I could find. Couldn't get anything because I was homeless, because I had no fixed address. So, you know, I'm not saying you have to turn around and give people the contents of your wallet. Just be nice to them. Even just a conversation actually makes them feel better. You know, that can lighten up their whole day. There is no need to treat someone like shit just because they are homeless because you don't know how they ended up there. You don't know why they're in that situation. Ask them. Talk to them. They are a human being just like you. They deserve the same amount of respect. And I like the fact that this song is addressing that. It's very good. Anyway, I went out on a bit of a tangent there. Um, the actual, like I said, the actual song itself is very good. I like the meaning, as you can clearly tell by the way I was just talking about it. And, you know, the music, it was it was pretty decent. It's, I don't think it's something I would go out of my way to listen to, but I wouldn't object to listen to it. And, you know, it's, it kind of reminds me of maybe like um, Heroes del Silencio or um, Die Toten Hosen, you know, that, those sort of punky bands. Um, it reminds me a little bit of those. You know, it's pretty, pretty decent. I wouldn't object to listen to it, but I don't think I'd actively go out of my way to listen to it. But I do really like the meaning behind this song. But I've rambled on for ages, so I'm going to leave that as it is. Um, now, if anybody would like to suggest a track for me to react to, then please do so by all means. You can drop a comment in the comment section below or message me on my Facebook or my Instagram, uh, where you could also help to support this channel, help me create future content. Uh, there is also an option in there where you can... Uh, get your suggestion jumped to the front of the queue um, there are limitations on that to be um, in order to be fair to people who have suggested tracks through uh, regular means um, and if you do suggest a track through uh, regular means uh, do know it might take me a while to get around to it since I get suggested so many tracks every single day um, my list grows faster than I can record the videos, but I do write down every suggestion I get, so it'll get done eventually. It just might take me a while to get to it. Also, Metalhead Reacts is a proud supporter of the Sophie Lancaster Foundation, a British-based charity whose main goal is to put an end to hate crimes, mainly those that are aimed towards people of the alternative culture. And it's something that I believe in very, very strongly, something I think really needs to be talked about a lot more. Uh, it needs more recognition, that is for sure. Because every single day, all over the world, people are getting violently attacked because of the music that they listen to, because of the clothing that they wear. You know, And, you know, we're not just talking about the, the occasional little bit of bullying. I mean, brutally assaulted. You know, people are getting hospitalized. People are getting bones broken you know they're getting violently assaulted just because of their taste in music and it is absolutely ridiculous it is unbelievably absurd you know of all the things in the world to get annoyed at someone for is their taste in music you know and the thing is this happens every single day but no one talks about it nothing is getting done about it because no one's talking about it and that needs to change you know 
the last time this was widely spoken about was about 12 years ago when Sophie Lancaster and her boyfriend Rob Melby were violently attacked and brutally beaten by a group of five or six people. Now, both of them ended up in comas. Rob Maltby, he thankfully survived. He came out of the coma after about a week or so. I can't remember exactly how long. But Sophie Lancaster was in a coma for 13 days before she eventually succumbed to her injuries and died. This young woman, about 20 years old, was brutally beaten to death. She was murdered purely because of her taste in music. And that, that just disgusts me, you know. What... What music someone listens to is none of your business. It doesn't affect your life in any way. So you have no excuse or reason to attack them for it. But the thing is, like I said, this happened over 12 years ago. And there has not been a single widespread report of something similar happening in that time. But I can guarantee you that in those 12 years, several hundred, maybe even thousands of people from the alternative community have been attacked in similar ways possibly hospitalised, maybe bones broken. But it's never getting spoken about because it hasn't ended in a tragedy, and that should not be the case. It shouldn't take someone's death for something to get spoken about. I mean, you look at all these other hate crimes, things like sexism, racism, homophobia, transphobia, you know, all these sort of things. We hear about these on a daily basis, from the most vicious and deplorable crimes of, like, murder, etc., down to the much simpler and lesser crimes of maybe some entitled Karen shouting an insult at somebody because she doesn't like their skin colour or their religion or something like that. You know, we hear about all, you know, every, every different kind of crime involved in, in those uh, situations. But when it comes to people of the alternative community getting violently attacked. We only ever hear about it if someone dies. And that shouldn't be the case. We need to talk about it when people are getting, you know, assaulted, getting bones broken, getting hospitalised. We need to bring attention to this to stop it from happening because apparently, essentially, the people that are committing these crimes are just getting away with it because nothing is getting done. You know, they're basically being given a free pass saying, you know, you can attack them, we're not going to do out about it. And that needs to change. That needs to stop. We cannot allow what happened to Sophie Lancaster happen again. It should never have happened in the first place. And it's, it's really important that we put an end to this. We cannot let these people keep getting away with it. Um, if you'd like to find out more about the Sophie Lancaster Foundation, there is a link to their website in the description below. You can go over there, find out what they're working on at the moment, uh, find out what their uh, main goal is, because they can explain it a lot better than I can. Um, and if you can help them out in any way, obviously you don't feel obliged to, if you can help them out in any way, you know, something as simple as, um, you know, a small donation through their website, or maybe even one of these Sophie wristbands from their web store, you know, if you can help them out in any small way, it's greatly appreciated, because the smallest amount can make the biggest difference. And the sooner we can bring more attention to this, the sooner we can help to stamp out prejudice, hatred, and intolerance everywhere. But I'm going to leave that as it is for the time being. Thank you all very, very much for watching, and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.